it's not my practice to, to comment on uh, domestic uh, matters. But uh, that's that's the freedom he's talking about. That's the hallmark of our democracy. The hallmark of our democracy, is it? One of the main things the U.S. likes to do to propagandize against China, to push back against China, to try and make China, uh, 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 you know, and make them ostracized on the world stage. One thing they like to do is say, oh, it's a it's an oppressive state. It, 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 it locks people down. They won't let them go. They, they won't let you speak your mind. There's no free speech in China. It can't even, you can't even do anything you want. You can't even fly a kite in China. They'll, they'll tackle you and they say, no kites allowed here. That's what they do in China. And so they just throw out all this, oh, China's so anti-free speech. So Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State, is asked about these protests, these student protests across the United States. And he's asked while in China. And you'll see, he almost entirely avoids answering the question because he's asked two questions at once. And so he basically only answers the, the, the first one. You'll see. Well, we're on the Middle East. I, I think we can't ignore uh, some of the images that have been coming out from back in the U.S. from uh, university campuses. Um, it's quite striking to see, you know, students, um, some of the violence in, in these protests. But but students all across your country are coming out and, and expressing their outrage at what's happening in, in, in Gaza. Are you taking on board uh, those protests, you know, what do you say to uh, young people, young Americans who, um, you know, see this as as a moment when they need to um, speak out against their government? And actually, the guy didn't even ask as tough a question as I, I thought he did. Uh, he didn't even ask about the brutal attacks against some of these students. Sure, some of them are not being attacked, but many of them are by these police. So he didn't even ask him about the brutal police response. Thanks. Uh, so first on the Middle East, um, I think um, I've talked to. So I'll skip ahead here because he basically, it was a two-part question. First one was about Middle East. He spends all of the response on the Middle East because he doesn't want to talk about these student protests. He doesn't want to talk about the, the uh, complete shutdown of freedom of speech in the United States, a complete shutdown that liberals support, right? Oh, liberals, I thought you wanted freedom of speech. Oh, no, just went in with stuff we agreed with. That's the kind of freedom of speech we want. It's a, a crushing of freedom of speech that the far right, it seems fine with. Because, oh, it's not an open carry protest? that, that They're not protesting against uh, unisex bathrooms? Then we don't support their right to free speech. That, that We only support freedom in these certain topics. This is an area where China can use the relationships it has, the influence it has, uh, to try, for example, to follow uh, proceeding and then uh, immediately following uh, Iran's unprecedented attack uh, on Israel. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's other stuff in here I could have made fun of, such as Iran's unprecedented attack. How about the fact that Israel bombed their consulate, killing four of their generals and like seven of their people? Like, that's what's unprecedented. Iran's unprecedented attack? Uh, Ten days or so ago. Um, and I think uh, the relationships, again, that, that China has, uh, avoid the spread of the, the conflict. And we agreed that we'd remain uh, in, regular, in regular touch on this. Um, and uh, that's certainly my, uh, my intention. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of the, the meeting you referred to, I think you said, between Fatan and Hamas. Um, so nothing to say on that. Uh, in terms of the uh, protests back home, look, again, I'm not, uh, it's not my practice to, to comment on uh, domestic uh, matters, but look, people. <laughs> it's not my, yeah, yeah, dude, you, you're a representative of the United States. You need to comment on shit that has to do with the United States. People have strong, passionate feelings um, about what's happening in Gaza uh, and in the Middle East that I very much understand. And when we see the horrific human suffering uh, and the death of children, women and men who are caught in this crossfire Hamas is making. Uh, <laughs> caught in the crossfire Hamas is making? Uh, nope, sorry. Israel is just bombing the ever living hell out of Gaza. That is not caught in the crossfire. That is just genocide. That's like saying that the Jews were caught in the crossfire in the Holocaust. You know, that's just a pity they caught in the crossfire. No, it's just genocide. Um, 
it's gut wrenching, as I've said before. And we want to do everything we can to bring it to an end. Um, and in our own country, it's uh, a hallmark of our democracy that our citizens make known their views. Their and then get brutalized and attacked and shot with rubber bullets. Uh, how about at Occupy, which I was at, where people were brutally attacked and shot with rubber bullets and shot with tear gas and shot with pepper spray, some of which I experienced. Uh, how about uh, Black Lives Matter, where people were brutally shot with rubber bullets and attacked and reporters who were wearing big press badges to make it clear that they were press were shot with rubber bullets and attacked and tear gassed. And I know one who had, uh, I believe it was her hip broken as a cop stomped on her. Uh, that's, that's the freedom he's talking about. That's the hallmark of our democracy. The hallmark of our democracy, is it? Is it? To have a brutal fascist police force just totally assault those who actually stand up and demand things such as the end to systemic racism or the end to a U.S.-backed genocide or the end to uh, uh, immense Wall Street destruction of the world. Now, of course, at the heart, at the core, you get down to the nasty, throbbing black core of this system. All of those things are related. All of those things are connected down at the root. It is a colonialist, uh, capitalist project, okay? It is all there at the bottom, the Occupy and Wall Street and Black Lives Matter and Israel. It is all about taking, stealing all of the resources, stealing even the life force of everybody working in wage slave jobs. It is about that at the core, right down there at the core. And yet, if you watch so many other news shows, mainstream media, indie shows, they will not get to that core. They will act like Occupy's over here, uh, U.S. backed genocide in Israel over here. You got Black Lives Matter over here. You got Standing Rock over here. There is no connection. It's like a, a, a sixth grade dance. You got them standing on opposite walls. Never the twain shall meet. No, they're all they're all linked at the heart, folks. If you're watching other shows where they don't say that, at least at some point, where they never get to that deeper analysis, then uh, I hope you're listening to them for a kind of a lighter amusement, for a little little extra amusement and not for the actual core cause of this shit. All right, there was uh, goon Anthony Blinken basically completely dodging the question other than to say, you know, opinions are strong and uh, people are... The people are things and hallmark democracy. It's like he's a Mad Libs of, bud, uh, of buzzwords that the U.S. empire has to throw out every three minutes. Democracy, freedom, yeah, hallmark, red, white, blue, uh, strength, yeah. It's completely meaningless.